Well hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is mobile, HF mobile operation. Well I've operated HF mobile right from the early days, so that's about 60 odd years ago. Started off on 60 metres and uh, that was quite a challenge, although I didn't realise it at the time, but uh, it was quite a challenge to get signals more than about 10 or so miles um, across town. But as time went on, I ventured a bit further uh, HF and went on to uh, 40 and uh, 20 metres. Well, you know, there, is, there are some challenges for HF mobile. It's not, it's not sort of uh, easy all the time. But I would venture to say that at the moment, it's an ideal time to think about HF mobile operation. The reason being is that conditions are so good on the higher bands, on 10 metres, 12 metres and 15 metres, the conditions have been excellent. Now, not every day, that's not every day, but uh, I should say that several times a week, maybe three, four times a week um, during the day, there's some really good conditions on 10 metres. Of course, it comes in clumps sometimes, it's like buses, nothing happens for three days, and then all of a sudden you get really good conditions. But yes, the HF bands have been really good for mobile operation. Now, one of, the, one of the attractions, of course, is that not only are these upper HF bands very uh, good at the moment, very, uh, very good uh, propagation, but they also are not very demanding on antennas. You know, it's possible to operate a full-size antenna on 10 metres and 12 metres and 15 metres, and really and truly, at a pinch, you could do it on 20 metres. You can have a, an aerial that's five metres tall. I do question, of course, whether or not operating with antennas that size really should ha carry the suffix stroke mobile. I think probably stroke portable would be more appropriate. Uh, my, my book always says that um, you can only really call yourself mobile if you're actually able to drive the car along with the equipment as it is. In other words, if you've got a, a five metre aerial on top of the car, are you really likely to move the car, drive along the road? No, I don't think you are. I'm not even sure that many would do it with a, with a, a two and a half metre whip. It's more, pos it's more likely to be possible, but even then, mm, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit debatable. Anyway, the good news is that we can go either mobile or we can go stroke portable, call it what you like. Conditions are very good. Now, I would venture to suggest that in many cases, if you're a guy with a smallish garden, you're probably going to put out a better signal when you're operating mobile, oblique portable, than you are at home. But anyway, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let me, let me just introduce you to an antenna that really covers the best of both worlds in terms of it can offer full size uh, antenna performance and it can also offer you the possibilities of going on the lower bands with uh, a means of loading coil. So let's take a look at the MFJ1661 and then I'll come back to mobile operation in general. We're going to have a look at the MFJ portable kit, the MFJ1661. And at the heart of it is this variable inductor, which I'll show you uh, in a moment. But the kit actually comprises a bit more than just what you see on the screen. You also get two whips. One is 10 foot long, sorry it's in the Imperial, but that's the measurements MFJ provide. One is 10 foot long, and one is four and a half foot long. So there you have it, that's, th that's the kit. And it's quite flexible. So let me explain how the basic concept works and how it might work for you. If you look at the picture now, Forget the collar around it, but what you've basically got is a loading coil. On the left hand side is a 3 8 inch connector, which is the point at which the RF connects to the system. And at the other end, you've got a socket for the whip, and in between, you've got the loading coil. Now, the collar on the outside enables you to adjust the resonance of the antenna by adjusting the inductance. I'll show you here. If I slide the coil uh, uh, cover or the, uh, uh, the the outer up and down it progressively shorts out the coil and enables you to adjust the resonance of the antenna it covers 40 to 10 meters at least that's what uh, 
MFJ say and I have no problem with that at all and with the longer whip connected you'd certainly get 40 meters and uh, with it uh, telescope back down you'd get uh, 10 meters but let me show you the way that it's most likely to be used here we have a 3 8 inch mag mount you may want to use one of these three legged ones but uh, basically you need a mag mount that's got a 3 8 inch uh, uh, connector to it of course you could have a, a mount already on your car with a 3 8 inch socket but uh, uh, for a lot of people I think the mag mount is the favorite and what you do is you can put the coil unit straight onto the mag mount and you've got the basis for a base loaded antenna system now to adjust the system it's recommended you use an antenna analyzer you could use a VSWR meter but you must remember that the whole base of that uh, this antenna system is live so you shouldn't uh, even attempt to adjust it while there's RF going through it what you need to do is to uh, make a rough set in uh, based on received noise or received signal strength then uh, stand back check the VSWR switch back to receive make the necessary adjustment and then once you've got a low VSWR you're, you're on, on, on song to uh, go on the air and uh, there is a possibility of course of making markings on the base of the antenna with a perhaps a felt tip pen so you know roughly where the setting is uh, there is a lock-in uh, nut or thumb nut at the base of the antenna to uh, lock it in place as i said uh, earlier on you've got two whips the longer one you'd almost certainly need to get <coughs> 40 meter resonance i suspect and uh, you could leave that uh, that longer whip on and just telescope it back down for the uh, other bands but if you're operating in a confined space or you're thinking about actually going mobile then you probably want to use the shorter whip either of the whips will just connect to the top of the uh, uh, coil as you can see here now of course the best combination is always uh, the longest possible whip and the least amount of inductance but you can juggle that around to suit your own operating benefits but this system is perhaps even more versatile because you don't actually have to use the loading coil for example a 10 foot long whip will resonate on its own on 10 meters and 12 meters so you could put the basic uh, whip itself straight into the magnetic base so you can see the system is very versatile indeed and whilst we are thinking about portable operation hopefully in the better weather in the coming spring and summer it's worth just bringing to your attention that we have yet another supply of the Discovery 500 transceivers. They're quite amazing. They're totally waterproof, very, very rugged. I used one for about nine months and it got to soak in, it got thrown in the back of the car and it didn't show any signs of distress at all. It's a great radio. Check them out on our website. Well, it's an interesting uh, little kit, the MFJ 1661. Let me... Um let me just digress slightly. On this channel, uh, talk quite a lot about small gardens. And of course, there are those that can't actually erect antennas at all because there's a ban. The local authorities won't permit aerials. And we've talked about putting aerials in attics and so forth. And that's entirely possible. And I don't think anybody can, uh, can grumble about that. It's not visible and therefore it doesn't contravene any regulations. But there is another opportunity where you're not allowed to have aerials, but you might get away with this one. And the idea is that you plonk your mobile antenna on the roof of your car. And now I'm assuming that you, your car, you can park your car on the driveway or off the road. So you plonk the antenna on top of the car, and then you run coax cable from that mobile antenna back, say through a window, into the radio room and you operate your radio as a base station 
albeit that you are using a mobile antenna. Now the mobile antenna is not a permanent structure and you're quite entitled to park your car in your driveway and you're quite entitled to have a car aerial. So you've got your car, your car aerial, and you've got your ham radio station running energy into the mobile whip and you should be able to get some contacts. Now I know that it's not possible for everybody, but it is a possibility. Another way of trying to get on the air under very difficult circumstances. Now I said earlier on that I reckon that those with small gardens may well be able to put out a better signal from a mobile or portable operation than they can from their home station. Peter Waters saying that, what is he talking about? Well, let me explain. If you have a full-size antenna, we're talking about quarter wave. If you have a full-size quarter wave on 10 metres, it's two and a half metres tall. Uh, on 12 metres is a bit taller than that, on 15 metres it's a bit taller and the ultimate is uh, probably on 20 metres where it's 5 metres tall. But it's perfectly possible to have that set up when you are static, when you're not mobile, you're actually static, well, let's call it portable operation. It's full size and therefore it's going to be fairly efficient. But I would venture to say that it's going to be more efficient than the antenna in your small garden. Why? Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is that I reckon you've got a better earth system when that quarter wave is plunked on top of your car and raised above the ground, of course. I reckon you've got a better earth system there than you have in your back garden. There's a big chunk of metal in a car. All right, some of it is plastic these days, but nevertheless, there's a lot of metal there and it does work and it works quite well. Secondly, you're not hemmed in as you would be in your small garden. Your small garden, you've got houses all around the place, and you've got cables and uh, telephone poles, electrical poles, etc, etc, concrete patios, etc. It's all working against you. If you're out mobile or portable, the chances are you're well away from that. You're almost in this sort of open field territory which we all yearn for so assuming power is like for like if you're able to run 100 watts on your mobile setup and it's entirely possible if you're able to run 100 watts i reckon you're going to get better results than you would in your home station running a similar mobile antenna um, running similar power you think about it i think you can talk about probably be 6 dB or so because you know there's a classic problem is small gardens you just can't see enough sky for a vertical to work properly take it out away from the small garden into a more open area it works better and you've got that lovely chunk of metal beneath it which is going to be a better earth than you're likely to be able to provide in your small garden interesting isn't that so if you're thinking about going HF mobile then Think about using a full-size antenna, but not true mobile, portable. Don't drive along with a full-size antenna. It really would be silly. So there we are. It's my take on HF mobile at the moment. Conditions are right. The MFJ 1661 offers possibilities. And I think that we can look forward to some pretty good conditions over the next two or three years. Ideal for mobile operation. Great for those that really feel that they would like to get out of the house, put a better signal out in a nice open area, and give it a fresh air as well. Think about it. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and I look forward to seeing you, as usual, in the next video. Bye for now.